yet another week of I you know I did this to myself. I fully acknowledge this. Started this show? Yeah, I did this to myself. I I I can't deny that. I'm I am the one responsible. I am the creator of my own hell because there was a story this week that everybody sent to us. You know the story. So it, it involved... I probably am forgetting. I don't... See, people send me the links when they send you the links, but I usually don't click on them because I kind of don't like to be prepared in advance. And I got criticized for that once. A dude I went on a date with off of OkCupid. Okay before we went out, he watched a few episodes of the show, and he came ready with a fucking critique on our date. <sighs> and, like, told me that I would probably be funnier if I prepared jokes in advance. And I was like, you would probably be better if I never saw you again. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not the kind of thing you do on a date. That's You don't... No. You, like, what the fuck? He's like, yeah, so that that web show, like, it's okay. You're funny sometimes. Like, what do you do to prepare? And I'm like, I I, I fucking get called on Skype and I make bad puns and vulgar Big Lebowski references. And he's like, oh, well, that's probably the problem. You should prepare more. And he started giving me notes. And I'm like, cool story. Anyway. Dudes. So let's, shall we get to the one, the, the, I do this, I, I do bring this on myself because everyone sent me this story, and it's like, this is what my name is synonymous with now. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible things, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck's Wrong With You, and, Crazy. hey, this is a New Jersey one, so. Woohoo! Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, there you go. Because I saw this and I was like, this is going to be on the show. This, yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. So I'm just going to jump right into it because there's, there's no segue here. Mystery Pooper. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's always the Mystery Pooper. At New Jersey High School's track turned out to be superintendent. Yeah. The Kenilworth School superintendent charged Monday with defecating in public was caught in the act at the Holmdel High School football field and track after surveillance was set up due to human feces, feces being found, quote, on a daily basis. Thomas uh, Trauma... <laughs> Tramagli? Tra oh, for fuck's sake. Tramalini? Tramalini, thank you. 42. It's Italian, so the G is probably silent. Lives about three miles from Holmdale he's my, High School. Well, he's a year older than me. In neighboring Aberdeen. He was running at the track on the athletic field before he was arrested. Track coaches and staff at Holmdale High School told District Resources Officer they found human feces on or near the football field and track daily. School employees began monitoring the area. Uh, Tremolini is also charged with lewdness and littering. <laughs> littering I mean, and... what is the charge for shitting? Littering and, littering and, littering and, poop. Uh, he's too in municipal court. Tremolini has taken paid leave of absence from his $147,000 a year job in Kenilworth. So this motherfucker's still getting his six-figure salary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this was the superintendent of schools. Yep. Superintendent of schools apparently went for a run every morning at the high school. And then dropped a deuce. Every morning! Every morning. I just, for fuck's sake, aren't you the super... Doesn't someone give you the keys? If you're at like the, I know, like weight loss drugs tend to speed up the whole process. Protein shakes can really run through you. But they you got plan better, man. They give you the keys. You could go right inside, and there are bathrooms you can poop in. 
Well, honestly, if it's six o'clock in the morning, the high school's some of the doors are probably open. Go poop in the house that early. Go poop in the fucking bathroom like a person. Yeah, that's what people do. That's why my animals come into the bathroom and stare at me while I'm doing it, because it's not what they do. Right. Peggy likes to sit on the tank and look over my shoulder while I'm peeing. Grady likes to just roll around in the bathtub and occasionally look up at me and yell. She also likes to hide in between the shower curtain and the liner. And then, like, pop out if her sister comes in. I just... Oh, you're doing it. You're doing the chin thing. But if I pick you up, you're going to stop. I can't show them. Is this $150,000 a year and you poop in the field? I think you're overpaid. Like, what's the reason for that? Loki, the dog, poops in the field. And he doesn't get paid anything. And you have to pick it up or they will fine you. Well, no, it's in my yard. Uh, well, okay. Do you know in Ireland... They will find you 4,000 fucking euro if you don't pick up your dog poop. Well, it's a much smaller landmass. 4,000 euro! We're like, yeah. no wonder everything's so clean here, dude. No, it's, it's... I mean, you know what? Even cats bury it. Like, my girls shit in a box, but they bury it. I mean, it's... I... I... And then they watch in awe while we scoop it. We sh I should put my dog up for uh, a job as a school superintendent because he appears to have the same qualifications. Do you poop outside? Yes. Welcome. You're hired. What's the motive here? Is it just... Uh, like, did you not like your job? Because you could just quit your job. You can. You don't have to poop on things. You could just quit. That's not a good solution if you don't like your job. You should just quit and find just, a new job. Just quit because pooping on things, that's, that's, people are sad and angry when you poop on it's things. It's also a biohazard. Yep. Any kind of bacteria you're carrying around. John the it's wizard. Like John the wizard in the chat says he doesn't give a shit. Well, he does. He does every day. Every day. That's every the problem. Blessed day. He gives precisely one shit a day. Why? I and this, you know, every. Like if this was a student doing it, I'd kind of understand because teenagers are terrible. monsters. Yes. Yeah. Little beasts. But but, you know, every teacher in the school is loving this this right now. Every teacher in the entire district is yeah. grown fucking ass humans are making poop jokes right now in the break room. And laughing their asses off. Pooper intended. Pooper intended. Yes. <laughs> I I really really want to know the fucking motive here. Like it's important to me. <laughs> well, you know what? You know me. I always want the why. We never will. We never will. It's gonna be a mystery. I don't know. I might go to his house. Um. Okay. <laughs> Uh, our next story is going I'll to... I'll get a little microphone with the what the fuck is with the RDA logo and be like, I just need to know why. Our viewers need to know why. Do you have a comment? Next story up, it, it's going to seem like a rerun. It, it is not a rerun. The, this, the same thing happened twice. And, oh God, I wish it hadn't. I, I just, I wish... Oh, God. I mean... I mean... I mean... I don't know where we're going. We're going to the 7-Eleven. Okay. Woman cited for allegedly causing urine to explode in 7-Eleven microwave. It oh, happened again. How does the same thing happen twice? Aurora, Aurora police cited a Denver woman for allegedly damaging a 7-Eleven microwave by heating up what appeared to be urine, causing the urine to explode. Police officer cited Angelique Sanchez, 26, 
Road News report that he found Sanchez at a uh, Concentra, Concentra, Concentra Concentra Health Clinic about a half mile north of the 7-Eleven. According to the May 3rd Aurora Police Department report, May 3rd, as in four days ago, this is not a rerun. Sanchez was waiting for a physical and urinalysis for a future job. <laughs> Nine News medical expert Camelia Sasson said that one, one of the quality check measures for a urine drug screening was to make sure it is at body temperature 98.6 plus or minus a few degrees. The only, quote, the only rationale would be that after you've given a urine sample and it gets to room temperature, which we know whatever the te ambient temperature is, maybe that's 70 degrees, whatever the day is, now you feel the need to warm it up to body temperature. Maybe that would be the reason to put it in the microwave. Sasson added that putting urine in a microwave can also destroy the urine by causing it to overheat. So let's see what you did here. Angelique. Um, and then you just went to your drug test anyway? Yup. Without your fake sample? Yup. What was, what was the backup plan? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, could you pee in if a bottle for me? Explodes, you should immediately see a doctor. Yes, computer Ronin, you should. I, if your urine is combustible, you I, might I, have a problem. So here's the series of events. You got out of bed that morning. You peed into a container, and you took it to a Seven Eleven. She probably bought. She probably. It's probably her friend's pee. And well, that's true. That's right. That's true because she's trying to beat a drug test. She's trying so. to beat the drug test. It's probably not her pee. So she, you. So you got a friend of yours to pee in a bottle, and you took so it. You're, to, you're already trucking around someone else's urine. You think take about it, your life. You take it to Seven Eleven, and you pop it in the microwave. That everyone else is using is that the piss explosion <laughs> oh, no that's a, a video of of that volcano in hawaii started auto playing <laughs> i was like <laughs> and then you blow up the microwave so now the entire 7-eleven smells like urine and i want to remind everybody that I can really feel this 7-Eleven employee's pain because I know what burning urine smells like. Burning cat urine. But I can't imagine burning human urine any better. I know that smell. You don't ever want to know that smell. And then after you have made a pee bomb, you just go that's, to the drug a test. bomb, by the way. Oh. That's, that's... No, literally. That's a bioweapon. Um, so... After that, you go for your drug test anyway. Yeah. Which you're probably going to fail, because if you needed to borrow someone else's urine. Oh, this is, a report said the clerk told police she heard a, quote, loud bang several seconds after Sanchez placed the liquid in the microwave. Quote, Sanchez looked at the microwave and walked out the door. <sighs> you can't just nope out on that. No. I, uh, you can't just be like, uh, uh, like that's the cat answer. I don't know. I don't know how that thing fell over. That's oh, really scary. Oh, okay. Oh, listen. Uh, according to the report, the clerk asked Sanchez to clean up the mess or she would call police. Quote, Sanchez wiped out the microwave onto the floor. Sanchez left. The clerk called police. She reportedly told police officer that, quote, she had cleaned up the mess and did not understand the problem. That microwave has to be thrown away. Yep. There's no amount of bleach nope. that will make that acceptable for customer use again. Nope. That's got to go. Everything within three feet of that shit has to be bleached. Yep. What's so the like, big you, deal? You grabbing a couple of coffee napkins and being like, it's all good. No. Mm -mm. I, that you're on your morning commute you're getting your gas you're getting whatever junk food to just make you stay alive long enough to deal with your fucking job and then you have piss bomb woman you don't need that shit nobody needs that shit nobody. poor girl working there certainly doesn't need that shit 
Oh God, yeah. That you're not no that that is one of the I mean, let's be honest, most people in America aren't paid enough, but that's a whole different yeah. level of you're not getting paid enough. Like we've all seen clerks. That job's that job sucks. Actually, we have not all seen clerks. There are some some fetuses watching. That's right true. Now. What? Oh yeah, we have we have like fucking thirteen year olds watching and shit. I know. We we make references sometimes and people in the chat are like, I don't get it. But I was born in nineteen ninety five. And we're like, get out. You should not <laughs> why are you here? You should not be here. This is not an appropriate show for you. <laughs> Speaking I mean, of at least we're not as old as Speaking of reasons why this is not an appropriate show for children, um, have you ever been in the middle of doing something, just anything, and just you can't bring yourself to stop? Like uh, something else is going on, like an emergency, and you're like, I, uh, and is it, you just like, shit, you can't shift gears? Didn't I have an eight year old at one time? Yeah, I misplaced him. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I used to live with my sister and my nephew, but he did not watch the show. He very much wanted to. He wanted to be on the show, and I was like, no. This, the next story is about a failure to shift gears, and that I believe that's kind of a pun. Um, or maybe it was a different kind of shifting gears entirely. Maybe that's what the kids are calling it these days. They're all yelling at me that, like, people born in 1995 or 22... Okay. You're still too fucking young. Tara, stop arguing with the audience and look at what I sent you for fuck's sake. I'm sorry. Because that headline. There you go! There you go! Man refusing to stop having sex with car shot with stun gun. This this guy had the worst day. Let me tell you about it. Newton, Kansas. That's what he's into. He might have had the best day. Authorities say an extremely intoxicated man who was attempting to have sex with the tailpipe of a car was subdued with a stud cut after he refused to stop. That must have been exhausting. <sighs> <laughs> Newton Lieutenant Scott Powell says the 24-year-old was taken to emergency room Tuesday because of his life-threateningly high 0.35 blood alcohol level and possible drug use. That's when you have almost more alcohol than blood. Yeah. Powell said the man also had a possible head injury and, quote, was completely oblivious to everyone standing around him telling him to stop. Stop fucking the car! How good can that be? <laughs> it's a tailpipe, man! I mean, first of all, your average tailpipe is pretty big. Yeah. Like, how How much are you packing? What was your nickname in high school? Beer can? Right, like... Because <laughs> unless it was, you're not going to enjoy it very much. Also, uh, exhaust, pi exhaust pipes, they have not round edges. They're sharp no, edges. That was my next point. Like, those edges aren't curved for your pleasure. Like, you're going to have some abrasions. And Lionheart mm -hmm. brings up an important point. That's not a place you want to get tetanus. No. Tailpipes. Also a very good point. Tailpipes are full of rust. Yeah. I you probably don't want any of that in your urethra. I you're fucking a car, man. <laughs> we okay. Like how, how fun can that be? We we have we have established how drunk you have to be to fuck a car. That is 0.35 blood alcohol level. That is yeah. the car fucking level. That's car fucking drunk. <laughs> I wish that could be the title. God damn, YouTube. <laughs> car fucking drunk. I'm, I'm all right. I'm not like car fucking drunk. I mean, I'm pretty wrecked, but that tailpipe is not looking good to me yet. So we're cool. We're cool. 
just just trying to get the guy to stop. I can just imagine there is a semicircle at this point around this dude. They're like, "Sir, stop it! Could you please stop <laughs> fucking the car, it, man? Excuse me, car fucker. Do you need assistance? <laughs> like, just do the plastic bag and a toilet paper roll thing." <laughs> when you get home. I, I, good God. They had to stun him to stop. That, that, I, I don't, it's like, how good. And let me just remind you all, metal is a conductor. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke sausage. And you know, mm -hmm. you know he wasn't fucking his own car. Smoke sausage probably had some nice sear lines <laughs> on that shit. That's he's fucking somebody else's car. That's not cool. It, he can't. It can't have been fucking his car. Why not? Why is that impossible? I don't. I, I don't understand I just, why it's out of the realm of possibility. Because if you're this fucking drunk possibly with other drugs in your system and a head injury. I doubt you're fucking your own car. You have wandered out into public and you are fucking someone else's car. I mean, you could be in public fucking your car. You could have left the bar and thought, I love my car. I love your car. Just don't love your car. That's another one the children won't get. Um... So here's, we, we keep having all of these es escape attempts from the cops that do not work. Like, the, I still love the fact that the guy had a bicycle. Had a fucking bicycle. A means of escape. And he threw it at them. That's a mode of transportation. You could have got, well, this next guy, I don't, I don't, how the fuck do you think, oh, for fuck's sake. Where are you going? Where are you going? Nowhere. Man running from police gets stuck in chimney. Always with the fucking chimney with these people. Man was taken into custody early Friday after authorities say he got stuck inside a chimney while running from police. You are not Santa. The 32-year-old committed a traffic violation, then refused to pull his car over. He then exited the vehicle and fled on foot, scaling a building. Police said the man started jumping rooftop to rooftop, at which point he became trapped in a chimney. Fun fact for you guys. Even if you don't pull over, they'll write down your plate number and they'll they can track you. that car back to you and they'll just mail you the fucking ticket. Yeah. And probably a court summons. Uh... One of the witnesses of the commotion said, quote, it was actually kind of funny because all you could really see was the top of his head sticking out and there was a little hand saying, help, help, help. Wow. Firefighters arrived at the scene, extracted him from the chimney and took him to Advocate Christ Medical Center as he was complaining of shortness of breath. <laughs> and black lung, probably. I so apparently what was happening was he was hopping the rooftops. He was fucking parkouring away from the cops. And then took one wrong step and ended up with his ass down a chimney. <laughs> Just pull over, man. You're going to get a ticket. Yes. You're going to get a fucking ticket. You know what's worse than a ticket? Black lung and jail. <laughs> And you're getting Chicken's looking pretty good right now. They have to smash that chimney to get your ass out. Right. So you're so getting you're sued. Getting the bill for that too. Yeah, you're getting sued for the cost of a chimney. Yeah. Idiot. Ticket's looking pretty good right now, I bet. Um this okay, this is not looking good. Everybody, this is one of those you may uh, consider this a warning. You may need to look away because there's video. Uh, I'll give Tara the story, and I'll go ahead and play you guys the video. Y'all might need to look away from this one. And there's Dan. Dan turned it, right? 
Have a look at this, everybody. Oh, hell no. Media that put that on Facebook. Go to the other side and put him up on him. This fool has Why got beans so in his damn truck. Why is he truck. laughing? What is wrong with you? You're going to die. Hell no. Oh, <laughs> Get out of I just really like well, you're, you're a You're definitely going to get the black oil that. virus from the X-Files <laughs> and wind up frozen in Antarctica until the My alien gets it. That's, that's what's going to happen to you. But go ahead and laugh it up. What you all just saw there was 3,000 bees inside that car. Oh, he's a beekeeper. Yeah, but... Alright, well I guess that's why he was laughing. Man drives 65 kilometers with 3,000 bees loose in the truck cab. A beekeeper driving a swarm of bees to their new home ended up having a tense trip when the insects escaped their containers inside his vehicle. Wallace Leatherwood had just picked up the bees and was transporting them from Waynesville, North Carolina. Mr. Leatherwood stepped away from his vehicle to get lunch and came back to find 3,000 bees crawling around the cab of his truck. I didn't have a shady place to set them, Mr. Leatherwood told uh, local news stations. When I came out, one of the boxes was black with bees, and there were bees everywhere. I thought, well, I don't know what to do. I didn't want to lose my bees. They were $165 per box. Um, uh, I, I love that... Uh, Onlooker Brandon Singleton captured another video of the same scene while Mr. Leatherwood was stopped in Canton, North Carolina. Quote, this fool got, got bees in his damn truck turned loose. <laughs> Mr. I mean, that's better than any fucking alarm system out there. Mr. Leatherwood said he drove 40 plus miles with the bees loose in the cab of his truck. So what happened was he went out he got food. He came back. The bees are in the car. So he's like, well, that's $165. Let's go, ladies. Move over. I'm driving. <laughs> he didn't have to be. It wasn't like he was driving down the highway and suddenly there were bees. It no. was there were bees and he willingly got in the car and was like, we got a big old convoy. Their boxes, but they got out of their boxes. It probably got way too hot in that car. Thankfully, he was not stung while driving, but he did suffer a few stings while remo removing the bees from the truck later. How the fuck do you remove the bees? What's, what's the process for that? I don't know. I just, I love the smile. The motherfucker is just like, yeah, I'm in a truck full of bees. I mean, that's, that's making the best of a bad situation. I just, I just, uh. Can you imagine passing that guy on the road? <laughs> <laughs> be like, holy shit. Yeah, it'd pretty much be one of those. That didn't happen. I, I'm car fucking drunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, callback. I just, there was I, a car talk story years ago. A woman had black widow spiders, a black widow spider laid her eggs in, in the woman's engine block in her car. And she couldn't get rid of them. Like every time she turned on the heat, fucking poisonous spiders were pouring out of the vents and shit. Cause spiders lay hundreds of eggs. And they just set up shop in her car. And they were like, the best advice we can give you is have the car painted and maybe the heat from baking the paint will kill them all. If that doesn't work, your car you just have to total the car. Or live with it. I would have set that car on fucking fire. But I don't fuck with spiders. We have one last one this week. And this one is I for our show heartwarming I, I i could say and again we have video who's ready for it this one comes to us from uh let's see what was where is this uh taizing city china this this is our i guess you consider this our uh squirrel on water skis kind of story 
only not. Um, let's have a look at this video, everybody. Oh no! <laughs> Wait for it. Wait for it. It's a busy day. There in that store. Come on. And suddenly, out of fucking nowhere, there's a car. Car in a store. I want, there's a joke I want to make, but I can't because it's a spoiler for a thing. What? What could? And I love, I love how the car crashed. This guy just Hello. points at the car, like, "Hey, there's a car in your store. Did you see that?" And there we find out who the driver is. That's such a fucking customer thing to do. Excuse me. There's a car in your store. It's blocking the thing I want to buy. Now I want you to look very closely at that dog. Does that dog look just like Loki? <laughs> he does. He does. He's so pleased with himself, too. Like, he said stuff like, Excuse me, where's the dog food? <laughs> Who was driving? Dog was driving. How can this be? It's no secret that dogs are intelligent. They are one of the few animals we rely on to do important service jobs, like guiding the blind and working with police. However, there are certain things which dogs are physically unable to do. Driving cars, for example. Beyond the capability of the canine. <laughs> there he is. I know, I'm a dog. Um, so this dog had tried to seriously overestimate itself and tried to drive a pedicab, it naturally ended in disaster. Um, in the now viral footage, the pedicab can be seen bursting in the store window, seemingly without a driver, before the dog pops up, much to the shock of staff members present. The dog reportedly climbed into the pedicab while its owner left its engine running as he ran an errand. Yeah, that'll do it. That's actually how I got in my accident last week. I left the car running and Peggy was just like, Tooses, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Reference. The I, kids won't get. I, I don't think the insurance company's going to buy that one. Well, that's why I didn't tell them. I, I step the bliss is hard. You can't, you can't, you have to watch dogs. You can't, you just have to. <laughs> I know for a fact, because if you don't watch them, they'll get inside your studio and eat all the cat food. Yeah. Or smash a car through a store. Dan's mom's beagles like to eat cat poop as well, so... Yeah. She has to... every Like, she has to be really diligent about whenever the cat uses the litter box, making sure to clean it. Otherwise, one, Buddy will eat it. <laughs> Why do they do that? That well, is the and worst. The she has one of those small covered litter boxes and only Buddy's head can fit in, but he will get his head in there and he will that eat That is the worst thing. <laughs> it is. It's like, why? That's that's not treats. How low are your standards? I, I, the poor dog. He had no idea. All that dog was doing when he was sniffing around the car, he banged into a pedal and all of a sudden he going for a ride. He's like, hi. I don't really know what happened. <laughs> where's where's my human? A poor puppy. Although he's adorable. Although he yeah. crashed into a store I, all the way. Not just a little, all the fucking way into the store. Like, who's liable for that? Oh, owner is expected to pay for the damage to the store. That is kind of, the, yeah, someone in the channel is pointing out, that's the best Uber ever. <laughs> I, I would definitely take an Uber. Driven by a dog? Yeah. Really? That, that's the only way I would ever take an Uber. You'd pay money to have Loki drive you somewhere? Yep. Because, spoiler alert, you're not going to get there. The only way, the only way I would ever take an Uber is if a dog was driving. You're not going to reach your destination. You're going to die. But I can pet the dog, though. Until you're dead. I, I'm, I'm still not seeing a flaw in this. The, the part where you're dead? Yeah, but you pet a dog until you die. That's the way to go. There are other ways you can accomplish that goal. <laughs> uh, that oh. Oh. 
Game, fiery, twisted metal. Gaming Merc says, is this what happens when a dog catches a car? They drive it. That That's what they're trying to do. They, they want to earn that sweet Uber cash. They're trying to catch the car to drive it. Okay, Greg, sit, Uber, sit. Good dog. <laughs> Well done. That's one the kids won't get either. No, they won't. Oh, I guess the first the first thing we learned this week is you gotta pay attention to your dog. Yeah, you gotta watch that dog. You think, oh, they're just fine right there. They're, they're, they're nothing, and then all of a sudden, talk. You just you just never know what wacky hijinks that dog will get into. Like driving a car. We've learned. Maybe if the car is full of bees and it's worth one hundred sixty-five dollars, you just call that. Just chalk that one up. Write that up on your taxes. That's a business expense. I mean, if you really trust those bees, that's better than any alarm system on the market. True. Nobody, nobody, nobody is stealing that car. Yeah, nobody. That. Hmm. Your car is fucking safe. Hmm. You got a car full of bees. Hmm. Um, we've learned <laughs> you if you re if you're trying to run from police with your hot high flying parkour crap, um, you better be damn good at it because otherwise your ass is in a chimney. Sometimes you just gotta take the L, man. <laughs> oh, was was a ticket. We've learned that we've learned exactly how drunk you have to be to fuck a car. Yeah. 0.35 is car fucking drunk, everybody. That is car fucking drunk. You can use that. I don't mind. Car fucking drunk. Um, we have learned that if you try to beat a drug test by microwaving your ur someone else's urine... Use your um, own fucking microwave, at least. Yes, that's number one. Don't use a public microwave, you <laughs> filthy, filthy fucker. And number two, it doesn't work anyway, so you've just made a mess... And that's it. You, you're still going to have to pee in the bottle. You're still not getting... I don't really drunk. understand why it exploded unless she had it in metal. Apparently that's something urine does if you microwave it. Like, if you had it in Tupperware, it should be fine. Well, What's in urine that's fucking combustible? I don't know. Is urine incendiary? No. It's not incendiary, but it might have... Uh, if anybody's tried it... It might have properties or aspects of metal in it. I don't know. You I, you can't just microwave anything. I found that out. Some things don't like being microwaved. R really? Yes. Okay. Urine contains phosphorus. Okay. Ah. And finally, we've learned if you are the superintendent you can go into the school and poop. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you're even allowed to use the teacher's pooper. You don't even have to use the ones the kids use. No. You could poop with the... You could probably take a shit in the principal's office bathroom, and he'll just have to put up with it. You don't shit in the field. No. Why would you shit in the... F Every day you were shitting in the field. That's some kind of... Perversion. That's that is a that is bordering on a very unpleasant fetish. Yes. Yeah. I I don't just the idea that 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 the high school kids well the high school kids already have to put up with your shit so you know not a big change there. You don't need to make that literal though. No. 